Welcome back, friends. Thanks for being here. Steve, KM9G, and... Becca, I uh, don't have my call sign yet. I'll have to check QRZ. Ooh, ooh. Sneak preview, what's coming up? So Becca just took her ham test, and she passed it. And what we're going to talk about today is how the experience was. Yep. Stick around. All right, Sunday, June 14th, 2020, just to put a timestamp on this so you know when we're talking about this in the epic of history. Uh, Becca took her ham test using hamstudy.org session to sign up for a remote test. I'm gonna put the link down below in the description for hamstudy.org slash sessions, and I'm probably gonna say it a couple of more times. And the test was given by GLARG, G-L-A-A-R-G, as the volunteer examiner coordinator group that put on that part of the test. It was handled through Zoom, so Becca got to sit down in front of the computer. She used a version of the software that you see on hamstudy.org when you do your studying, and that made it very familiar for her, and then there was a whole Zoom recording session. How did the Zoom session go? Um, the Zoom was good. I was one of five people in the room, so there were like four mod moderators. What VEs, I guess they're called? Volunteer examiners, yeah. And um, only one of them was talking, which was nice. You don't have like 20 people all saying different things. And it was really friendly. They were just like, hi, what's up? It's a beautiful day. <laughs> um, and they gave you a ton of time to ask questions if you were curious. And really, it was not stressful at all. All right, awesome. So what did they have you do in the preparation to get ready for actually taking the test? So you had to turn off any virtual backgrounds you had on Zoom, and you had to show them your entire room, including your floor and your ceiling, because somebody decided to put sticky notes on the ceiling so that they could pass the test. So as they were taking the test, they were looking at the question, and they were thinking very hard, looking up at the ceiling. Hmm. I wonder what the answer might be as it's written on my ceiling. Okay. And apparently somebody did the same thing, thinking very hard, looking down at the floor to find the answer. So now we do a uh, camera sweep of the room. So we showed around a couple of different things. Um, they asked that we shrink the desktop down to just one screen so they didn't have to share both screens. And they made sure there wasn't any notepads or cell phones or anything else on the desk that didn't belong there. And then how did they get you set up on the test? So um, they had you go into your web browser and it, I don't remember what the website was called. It was exam tools, but they'll tell you what it is. Yeah, so they have you go to a website and you um, sign in and they sign in and then um, they'll all mute themselves and get rid of their cameras while you're taking the test. That's so that they can't uh, watch you hover over answer choice B and go, hmm, -mm, that's not it, <laughs> or roll their eyes or give some kind of tell that you're giving the wrong answer. So they shut off all their cameras. And then, uh, how was the software? How, how well did it compare to the regular hamstudy.org study tools? Really, it was completely identical, except for the color was a little different. <laughs> That's like it. Different colors, a little bit different size, but you just click the answers, you can click, or you can type in the answers. But it's basically the same. All right, which test did you take? Technician. All right, technician. So technician is 35 questions, and how many did you need to pass? 26. 26, okay. So... Did it give you a score as you were going along so you knew how many questions you got right? No. No. So you had no idea whether you passed or not until they said you passed. Yeah, it told you how many questions you had answered and it would let you um, skip questions and it, they would like go up to the top and you could click on them. I, I mean, that's what they said. I never did it. And after you've answered all the questions, you can go back and change any of your answers until you've hit like end test and you're done. So it was really nice. I went back and checked all of my answers to make sure I got what I thought was correct. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so some, some real quick tips from some people that have taken the test. I've taken the tech, I've taken the general, I've taken the amateur extra. I've passed all of them, and I did them all the old-fashioned way on paper. Um, when I did it on paper, 
what I would do if there was a question that I wasn't 100% sure about, I would put a little mark next to it and I'd pass it right away. I want to get all the questions that I know out of the way first and get a lot of the pressure out of the way. Uh, I would go back to that question that I had an issue with and I would think about it some more. I would do some process of elimination, get rid of the obviously wrong answer. One of the questions had an answer of iambic pentameter. Um, I forget what the question was, but that was one of the answer choices. Clearly, that's English 101. That's not ham radio tech test 101. Uh, so that wasn't it. And that led to, what was there, ABC or ABCD? ABCD. So that got rid of one, you know, one fourth of the answer choices. And then there's a couple of questions where there was a nuanced answer where the answer had almost word for word the exact same. Uh, but the one word that made the answer right or wrong was switched. So you can kind of fool around with that. And then absolute last option, since it's a multiple choice test and it's wrong if you don't answer it, and it's wrong if you answer it wrong, but you might accidentally, just by pure luck, get the answer right, go ahead and pick any answer if you can't figure it out. Um, so by the time you've gotten rid of the one answer that's obviously wrong, and the one answer that doesn't match the question, and you're left with the two choices that are worded almost identical except for the, the not or the positive choice, um, then you're down to 50-50 if you still don't have it. But it's not that big of a deal. You can, some of the other tips, you can actually skip 100% of the math questions on the test, get every other answer right, and still pass, because you can miss six, five, nine. How many, how many questions can you miss? Nine. Nine. You can miss <laughs> nine questions on the test and still pass. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't stress out about it all that much. Do your, do your practice tests. Study, study, study. Um, read the books. Take some more practice tests. And when you start getting 90% or better on the practice test, you only need 75% to pass the real test. Schedule your real test and get out there and take the test. Actually, I would even tell you to schedule the test first. That way you have a deadline to work towards instead of, oh, well, I'd rather go ride my bike. I, I ride a big boy bike. She rides a pedal bike. Hey. <laughs> uh, or I would rather, you know, go on a boating trip or I'd rather do a park activation with my dad or anything else than study. If there's a deadline on the table, then you've got a reason to study. Any tips you can think of? Um, before your test, like the day of the test, I just took like a bunch of practice tests. And so if you take the test and then go through the questions, it'll tell you what you got right and what you got wrong. And then you take another test and you find the question, you go, oh, what I answered was wrong. This is the correct answer. And if you take a bunch of them, all of the questions are fresh in your mind right before your test. If you take them like five days before, you're not going to remember it at all. And then you're going to fail the test, which is not good. So the quick takeaways from this video are remote testing is a thing. It works extremely well. They're on to you if you're going to try to cheat, so don't try to cheat. It's not that hard of a test. Don't try to cheat anyway. You're only cheating yourself. Um, very friendly staff, very helpful, uh, very low-pressure environment. Um, outside of that, what are you waiting for? Thanks for being awesome.